I produce really good quality. Mm -hmm. no, I'm not trying to blow my own horn. <laughs> My name is Lynn Homeboy. I do, I make furniture and home accessories. So I run a furniture and home accessories business. Yeah. Yes. You run, you make handmade pieces. Yes, handmade, one hundred percent. Yes. And this is this is like this is like what tell us the two pieces that you make. Uh, we do beds, sofas, uh, tables and chairs, like some the sort of furniture that would go into your home, and also accessories. That is lamps, wooden uh, bowls and wooden chopping boards and throw blankets, we started making throw blankets um, recently and we are hoping to do more outdoor furniture as well. Okay, yeah. that's really cool. Where did you learn to do that? I didn't really learn, like I didn't go to school for this, I just learned on the job. It's, um, I've been interested in, in the construction interior space for a very long time but I didn't go to school for it so I just thought of how I'm going to get into the, the space and furniture was it, creating furniture and selling it. Yeah. Okay. So you make custom pieces? Eh? Yes, we we make custom pieces at the moment because it's very expensive to make and stock furniture for people to just buy off from the the the, the shop. So we have a very small workshop in on Gong Road next to Santa Cruz State where we just make stuff on order. But there are stuff that we make as a design. We design and make so that clients can be can be motivated to order such designs. So for example, like lamps, like the Black Widow lamp, we made it, and our clients order from the prototype that we made. I see. Yeah. Could you tell us like what it takes to create a custom piece? Could you have a custom piece, like the process, the sourcing of materials, you know, to making it a complete piece? Eh? What, yeah. what does it take? So if we're making a furniture piece for a client, uh, the client comes to us, maybe they got um, our, um, our contacts from a referral or online and then they share an image or a, of a design that they'd want. Then if it's a, it's a design that we'd need specific measurements for, we either ask for measurements or I go and take measurements in the client's home to just get to feel where the, the item will fit in into their space. And then we then create a quote, having agreed the kind of materials that the client would would want to be used depending on the outlook that they want to have. For example, if you're making a table and they want it to be really light in color, we can use cypress instead of mahogany. If they feel like mahogany is more stronger, then we use mahogany. And then we give them a quote. If they agree on the quote, they give us, they send us a 50% deposit, we start on work. Then within one or two weeks or within the agreed period of time, we deliver and then they pay after delivery. Yeah. yeah. So what makes a good a good piece like how do you how are you able to tell this is a fantastic piece, this is a good piece a good lampshade? What Number one functionality. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at, for example, um, you ha you're a family of eight, but you have a four seater dining table, it's not functional. Yeah. So even if it's so beautiful. It doesn't make any sense. So functionality is number one, the design as well. And also the joinery, is it strong enough to hold on to stuff? For example, is a bed strong enough for maybe your kids to jump on and it wouldn't break? Um, the beauty as well and the finish, like detail finish. For example, uh, if it's a sofa set, you don't want a sofa set that has been stitched badly or you see the tuck pins at the side of the, the sofa. You want a sofa that has been finished well and comfortability as well. You want to feel, once you get home, you want to feel like you're at home. Because furniture, I always say furniture is an, is an investment. So why spend so much money on a piece that wouldn't last you a long time and a piece you wouldn't want to see in your home or a piece that doesn't make you feel like you're at home? What's the average cost? Would you say a bit more competitive com com you know, if you compare with other stores in the market? Okay. Um, for example, a lamp, like the arc lamp we have, we sell it for 16,000 shillings. Um, it is a competitive price, in my opinion, because I think we are the only people that make arc lamps in Kenya. The rest, the arc lamps that I've seen are, most of them are imported. Um, for, say, for example, beds, we use the really good quality beds. For example, a 5x6 that we've made costed about 50,000 shillings, but that includes delivery and the setup as well. So 
I always um, compare myself with bigger stores, so with because I produce really good quality. No, I'm not trying to blow my own horn. <laughs> I produce really good quality, so I would say our prices are, are competitive compared to the quality that you get as well. Yeah. yeah. So all pieces are handmade here in Kenya, so materials sourced uh -huh. in Kenya? Here in Nairobi, in fact, mm -hmm. not just here in Kenya. Here in Nairobi, everything from the bowls to the boards to the lamps, everything is made in Nairobi, in Kenya. What would you say is the fa your favorite piece, the one piece you've made today that you think is like... The Black Widow would be my, it's my favorite piece ever. It's rustic, it's chic, it's different. I don't even have it in my house, but I really like it. I really like selling it. And when clients get it and send me pictures of their homes and how it makes them feel, it's really good. And plus it's, it's a lamp that guys can buy because guys don't really like floral stuff most guys don't so it's a very rustic chic and also masculine it could fit in any man's home in anyone's home anyone's home yeah yeah do you face challenges when you're doing this every day yeah <laughs> every Tell day us some of those challenges that you face every day when um first and foremost trust from clients because most clients have been disappointed by local artisans from way back so they really don't believe that local people could actually produce really good quality products and also production in Kenya is very expensive that's why sometimes our prices are very expensive because costs are very expensive like wood is very expensive because of the ban of not cutting wood and also being as a, as a lady all my artisans are men, so having to deal with guys and then they look at you as a lady, it's, it's challenging, yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about the street fair coming up, what people can expect, what will be there, what can they hope to come and find when they come to the street fair? Um, the street fair will be at the Node Westlands on Saturday morning. We are setting up from 8.30, 8.30 in the morning up to 6.30 in the, in the evening. So there will be very many vendors, including myself. There will be very many decor, home decor things and just handmade, Kenyan-made items. There will be good music as well and good food at the Node Westlands. Yeah. So would you bring the, 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 what do you call it, the app? I will bring the arc lamp and we have new designs coming up but unfortunately I won't bring the, the black widow my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well we hope to see it here. Yeah? Yeah. So if somebody wanted to find your product, where would they go to find them? Do they go online? Do, they, do you have a physical store? Uh, we have an Instagram. We are mainly online but we have a workshop on Gong Road next to Santa Cruz. It's a very small workshop where we get things done mm -hmm. but mainly you can find us online on Instagram at Santana Africa underscore. Yeah. Can you believe that's all? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> <I'm> done! <laughs>